Welcome back to the shop. What you see here is my next restoration project. I picked this thing up off of Craigslist. The previous owner was looking to get rid of it. He said the motor didn't work and was prepared to scrap the thing. I paid 35 bucks for it. My plan is not to restore this thing to original, like new condition. I think a few things have changed on it. It has all V-belt pulleys on it, and I believe originally it would have been all flat belts. I don't plan on switching back to flat belts. I don't believe the wheels on the base are original, but I do plan on taking those off. Obviously the motor is not original. My plan for this thing is to clean it up, get all the rust off, repaint it, and get it into good working condition so I can use it. Drill presses like this were made by a handful of different companies from the late 1800s through the 1940s, and more commonly referred to as drilling machines or sensitive drills. I've done just a little bit of research online about this thing and haven't found all that much. The name cast into the base plate of this one is the RK LeBlond Machine Company, and I've found very little information online pertaining to them and drilling machines or sensitive drills like this one. I apologize for the shaky handheld, but it'll let me get some close-up video for you guys. So you can see how the V-belt goes around the front, and then there's two that aim it downwards to the motor. And I believe originally this would have been flat belts and there would have been a cone pulley back here driven by a belt from a line shaft which would let you change the speed and therefore adjust the speed of the flat belt going up to the main pulley up here. The head and the table down here both slide vertically on a dovetail, which goes nearly to the base and all the way to up here so that you can adjust it depending on the size of your workpiece. And the head can go anywhere from that much lower down and still be driven. So it can drop another six inches down and still be driven by the keyway in the shaft right there. It only has about two and a half, maybe just over two and three quarters worth of travel. And there's about just over six inches worth of clearance from the column to the center there. And you can loosen this and raise or lower the head to wherever you need to be, so long as the top of the shaft here is still driven by the pulley. There's a counterweight down through the center of the column, which is pretty darn heavy. And I'm not really sure how all these other holes ended up in here, considering this thing doesn't tilt or swing out of the way. I don't know how these other holes came to be unless someone did them by hand just using this as a table to drill on. And you can see down on the bottom is where it's cast the name. It says the RK LeBlond Machine Tool Company, Cincinnati, Ohio, USA. I'll put up a couple still photos of that. For now, it's time to start taking this thing apart.
Not sure if you can see that keyway right there or not. That's what drives the spindle. I'm not exactly sure what the best way to deal with this counterweight is. You can hear it. You can hear it rattling around inside of the column down there. And I don't want to disconnect this and just let this thing go flying down. So I think in order for me to get this off of here, you can see there's two screws right here. I'm pretty sure, well, this one you can obviously tell is a pulley. I'm pretty sure that one would be a pulley too, to direct the chain back and down to the center of the column. I think what I'm going to do is lay this thing on its side so that I can detach this get the head off and see if there's a way to get the counterweight out of the bottom. This is looking at the bottom of the base. Not sure how well you guys can see in there. So there's two square head bolts on here. It looks like there's a third that might have been snapped off. And I soaked this down with penetrating oil about 10 minutes ago just to try to loosen it up. Not a good angle to get to these, but I don't have any eight point sockets to use. So I may have to order one. Quite the counterweight to that thing. Jeez. I wasn't in frame very well when the counterweight came out of there. I was expecting something about that long. This thing is almost, it's over two feet long. It's got an odd taper and a keyway down here.
It is a Jacobs truck. Half inch capacity. This looks to be a number one Morris taper. I think it's threaded on there. I don't know if you can see threads down in there. Now you want to be careful when you pull this off. Ah, uh, oh, they're actually in a cage. Sometimes there's the ball bearings are not in a cage like this and they're free to fall all over the place. So when you pull apart old drill presses like this you want to be careful otherwise you can end up losing ball bearings really easily. Like I said, I don't think this is original, but I'm going to pull it apart and clean it up anyways. I'm not going to bore you with all the rest of the cleanup process. Basically the next step will be to soak all the parts in here. This is warm water and degreaser. About 25% of this I put into warm water. Soak all the parts in here and it should get off all of this old grease and grime and oil pretty easily. So this is just paint that's stripped off. Because the paint was hardly sticking on there as it was. But all of the grease and dirt is coming off really easily. So the first step will be to soak all the parts and get them cleaned up in this. Then anything with paint left on it will get a coat of citrus strip to remove the paint. And once that's off, all the parts will get soaked in evaporust for a couple hours to get rid of any rust that's on them. After that, they're ready for painting. I've got all the parts cleaned up now. So it's easier to determine what sort of shape everything's in. I would say overall this thing's in fair condition considering its age. There are several parts that are damaged. The spindle here, there's threads that are marred up and that's from the steel set screw. 
that was put in there. So I'll file these out and they'll smooth up just fine. And when I put it back together, I'll probably put a brass set screw in there instead of the steel one. This guy won't come apart. This has got to come apart from this shaft. And I'm pretty sure that this right here is a broken off bolt. So I'll try to drill that out, see if I can't get that bolt out so that I can replace it. This piece, which is like a keeper, I suppose, for the key inside of there. Well, apparently it was all one piece with the key attached to that. Went on there like that. You can tell that it's cracked off. I'm not that worried about that. I'm probably just use this piece. I'll file this off of here and use this again, just as a keeper. Tap this out of here and replace the key. I don't know if you can see in there, but it's worn down to about half its original thickness anyways. So I'll replace it with something full size based on the size of the keyway here and just use this part to hold it in there. At the very top of the column, there's some damage to the guide for the spindle. There's a little chunk out of it and a couple cracks. There's about six inches worth of bore that guides the spindle. So I don't think this top portion missing will be detrimental to it. And if I ever decide to, I think I could press this whole sleeve out and turn up a new one. I think the toughest thing to repair is going to be this base. If you notice when I took it apart, it only had two bolts in it, and one of them had a washer on it. That washer was covering up this cracked out portion. The third hole that I thought was a broken, broken off bolt was actually just packed full of junk. There was no bolt in there at all. So it was only being held on with two. I'll definitely make a third one so we can use all three spots. I don't think I'm going to try to braze or repair this at all just because I'm worried about it cracking and I think it'll hold fine as long as I don't over tighten it and use a bolt in the washer like was on there before. Clearly somebody's been into this thing before because there's all kinds of damage on these bolts. I think they'll still work just fine. I'll file up some of these real rough spots. They came out just fine once I got an eight point socket. What I really wanna do with this thing is repair the damage over here where someone added the wheels. So I'm pretty sure the lettering would have gone all the way across here and they ground it down to have flat spots to attach these wheels to. So give me some suggestions in the comments I'm not sure what the best way to try to rebuild that up and repair it would be. I could try to build it up by brazing. That's probably the most durable way to fix it, but I'm a little concerned because I've never done that large of an area and I'm concerned about cracking. I know I could build it up with just body filler, but I feel like that would chip off pretty easily. I want to be able to build up the area past the letters and then use a die grinder or files or whatnot to re-carve the letters into two, these two areas. Let me know in the comments what you would suggest. Like I said earlier, I haven't found much information pertaining specifically to LeBlanc and these sensitive drills. Here's an image of a Google Books document. I'll put the link to it down in the description. This one talks about a LeBlanc sensitive drill that's somewhat similar to mine, but has a couple of key differences. At the top here, it's dated 1900. If anybody knows anything more about these or has any information on them, please let me know. You can put it in the comments or send me an email, buildfixcreate at gmail.com. In some upcoming videos, I'll work on the repairs before painting it and putting it back together. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching.